Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. We have a fantastic show for all of you today. Julie has taken a couple hours and gathered up a lot of facts and statistics. Now, why are we sharing this information with you? Quite simply, because knowledge equals confidence, ignorance equals fear. What we are going to do is give you the facts point by point about this market, about what's happening now, about what's going to be happening next. So you then will feel more confident, but also so then you can share that information, this information that you're about to learn directly with your real estate buyers and your sellers and other agents if you choose to do so. Before Julie gets to point number one, and we're going to, this is going to be a fast paced show because these facts, frankly, speak for themselves. Not a lot of vamping required, right? Nope, that's right. But we wanted to announce that Julie is starting a podcast series called Moms in Real Estate. And well, we just discussed it yesterday. We're definitely doing it, (laughs) right? Yes, it's coming up. I just don't have the first one ready yet. Yeah, it's no problem. We'll do that this week. Okay. Okay. And then the next new series we're going to be coming up with is a, we're getting back to doing a lot of interviews. So we're going to start doing interviews with two or three um, top producing, but not always top producing agents. Frankly, I find most top producing agent interviews to be rather boring. (laughs) I find the ones that are most interesting to be the Mm -hmm. successful new agents and the agents that are already successful that want to be top producers. Those are the ones that are... We'll call it the intriguing agent series. Oh, I like that. It's a good idea. Well, so we're expanding the podcast to include more types of uh, the type of content that will help you guys stay uh, motivated, educated, and obviously get you into action. So without any further delay. Yes, so the market is clearly moderating in a favorable direction for those buyers especially, but some of them are also listings, who have not taken themselves out of the market. So everything we're going to discuss today, you should be discussing with your buyers, again, especially those who also wish to sell. So please be clear before we get to these points, The market is not crashing in any way. It's not even becoming a buyer's market. It's simply getting back to a little bit more balance. Now, this is the hardest part of a transitioning market, right? Where we're uh, frankly about to enter. And the sort of visualization that I keep implanted in my brain when I'm trying to help you guys work through where we are in this process is I want you to imagine you're walking along a beautiful path and the ground around you, the terra firma has been stable and predictable. And now in order for you to get to the other side, to get to continue your your journey, you have to uh, cross over this rickety sort of Indiana Jones style bridge, right? Where maybe well, every but... maybe every fourth or fifth panel might want to fall, uh, you know, mm-hmm. break through where you might fall down some, you know, horrible gorge. Now I'm making this dramatic visualization so you guys can understand. We are all essentially just starting to cross this perilous, you know, this uh, bridge, right? Shift, yes. This shift. So this this bridge represents the shift. That once you cross to the other side of the bridge, then you're back on solid ground again. But for those of you who do not realize it yet, the market is shifting with or without your uh, participation <laughs> and you have to start crossing the bridge. During the process of crossing the bridge, the education that you're going to need and the skill set you're going to need. And really, frankly, you're going to need to start learning a lot of doctor filling of your buyers and sellers. Uh, a lot of fear is going to enter into the market. Buyers not wanting to catch a falling knife. Sellers having unrealistic expectations of their home's values. And we've done a lot of podcasts on those particular topics. Make sure you go back and listen to the, uh, the podcast and also watch our YouTube videos. But the point is, is right now we're all crossing this bridge together. We can get to the other side, but you have to remember, you do not have a choice but to cross the bridge. You absolutely have to cross it. So the suggestion is, as you cross it, following somebody who's already tested all the you know various uh, you know pieces of board to know which ones are going to be stable enough to get you crossed alive, right? And then when once we're on the other side, 
then we're going to be in what will be more of a balanced market. But before we get there, we're going to be going through what's going to feel like a buyer's market. Now, none of these terms mean anything to you, so I'll simplify it. Seller's market is what all of you have experienced for a long time. That's easy. Buyer's market is where the exact opposite is happening, where basically for every, you know, uh, one listing there or for every 10 listings, there's maybe two buyers, right? It's complete opposite of what we've been experiencing and a transitioning market is what we're starting to experience. Now, just so you're clear in most of the markets, 98% of the markets across the country and probably the world, we do not predict that there will be a buyer's market anytime soon. We do not predict there'll be an oversupply of homes. We do not predict that there'll be, you know, two buyers for every 10 homes for sale. We do not predict that's going to happen. Now, if you're going to meander into some commercial real estate, if you're looking at uh, commercial office space, maybe a uh, class A uh, multifamilies, maybe in those markets, that's going to be different. But um, what we focus on is residential real estate. So be very clear. The transitioning market to a more balanced market is what we're transitioning into. We're not transitioning into a buyer's market. That's right. And we're giving you the actual facts. Again, lots of research went into this. The, this is a lot of statistics and percentages and things because we know that you're also being inundated with the sky is falling headlines and things of that nature. And again, the sky is falling headlines. They sometimes will be worth reading, but just make sure that you're understanding what they're trying to sell you into is fear and that fear, generally speaking, doesn't result in you feeling confident enough then to take the action necessary to move forward. And one of the best and the smartest things for all of you to be doing right now is to join Premier Coaching. And we've made it very easy for you. We've made this an absolute no-brainer for you. Just text the word Premier to 47372 and you can join Premier Coaching 100% for free. And when you join Premier Coaching, Julie, what do they get as far as content in addition to the coaching calls? Yes, well, pretty much every tool you could possibly need in your real estate <laughs> toolkit for yep. success including all the presentations you're looking for. You should never go to a listing presentation without a presentation, the buyer presentation, the scripts, the objection handlers, and what I feel one of the most important things is your daily semi-private live coaching calls. You get a, a long-term plan for making a YouTube videos with ideas on how you should be staging everyone. You get social media plan. You get conversation outlines on how to talk with sellers and buyers in this market because of this market. Obviously, all the conversations are going to have to be a little bit more pointed. You're going to have an exact 90 day massive action plan. If you're basically in, uh, you know, leaning back on your heels right now, cause this market's catching you by surprise and you haven't financially prepared. Well, we've also prepared for you a survival plan, all of this and a hell of a lot more. And as Julie just said, also the daily semi-private coaching call with one of our Harris certified coaches you get for free, absolutely 100% for free and rolling takes about 22 seconds. And yes, I've timed it. So just go ahead and text the word premier to 47372, text the word premier to 47372. If you prefer not to text, remember, you can just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. So members, it's plural, dot Tim and Julie Harris .com. The dot is not spelled out. Some of you have asked. So members, you know, then dot Tim and Julie Harris .com and you can enroll directly. Or like I said, the quickest and easiest way is just to do it now while you're on your phone, listening to our podcast, or while you're, you know, watching the YouTube video and just text the word premiere to 47372. And you can join super simply over your, using your, um, your iPhone or your Android or whatever. It's perfect to so do that. Now you will have instant access, including all the access to today's points. So do that. That is going to be your homework. It's guys, look, there's no risk to you. You can join for free right now. You can enroll for free and have 30 days of access to premier uh, coaching. And like Julie said, a daily semi-private coaching call. If you're serious about your business, if you're serious about making your this market your market because of this market, we've made it easy for you. Join Premier Coaching. All right, Julie. So let's talk about the specific reports. I know you got a lot of this, stati this statistical information from a lot of different sources. Redfin, National Association of Realtors. You got some of this housing from EXP wire. Realty. Yep. Housing Wire. Your research is a different place. So let's give these guys these yep. points. And uh, guys, write these down. Or again, when you're in Premier Coaching, you can just download these because Julie's uh, uploaded all this for the first month of Premier Coaching. Yes. Okay. So the first one is the median home sale price was up 13% year over year to 396000 Now this growth rate is actually down from a March peak of 16%. What does this mean? It means that home prices are still going up, 
but they're not doing what they used to do, which is a bigger percent month over month over month. Now they're starting to stabilize a little bit. So that's good news because we're kind of adjusting to a flattening out of that. But it's still insane. If it's you think still about insane, it, right? Year over year appreciation in the almost 30 years Julie and I've been in the business has never been more than even nationally, maybe five or six percent. The very fact that during this, you know, maybe we're in recession, probably who knows if we are or aren't, but inflationary time, interest rates rising, you know, all this uncertainty, the very fact that in the last 12 months, homes have gone up by 13 percent. Think about how much money that is, how much more essentially equity that homeowner could have had that house, how much money they would have uh, saved had they not been paying rent. It's extraordinary. That statistic itself should sell itself. And next point, Julie. Next point, the median asking price. We're talking asking price now of newly listed homes increased 15% year over year to 399.9, but was down 2.2% from the all-time high set during the four-week period ending June 5th. This means sellers are not pricing as far over the last best comp. But again, it's still really good for sellers. And we're seeing that. You're seeing that too. You're seeing price reductions. Don't confuse price reductions with actual falling uh, real estate values. It's just sellers pricing their houses appropriate to the market. Exactly. The market has given them feedback saying overpriced, overpriced. So then they adjust it down. But that does not mean the seller did not uh, you know, enjoy massive appreciation on their property. They're just not going to enjoy as much as they have been in the previous years that they've owned the home. Well, evidenced by the fact that 7% of total inventory over the past four weeks has done price reductions. That's something very different. These guys That's have. nationally. That's that's right. And that, that makes it look kind of crazy, right? But a 7% of overall inventory doing price reductions, that is the highest amount of price reductions since uh, any time since 2015. So that shows you that they're getting a little bit more moderate, a little bit less crazy. This is why we're calling it a shift, not a crash. Well, it's still not staggering. But look how that's being spun, spun. by people who are either ignorant or nefarious. In Salacious. Their intention. Right. Yeah. So they're saying houses have dropped, asking prices have dropped by 7%. Well, who cares? It just means there was a bunch of sellers that were overpriced by 7%. Yeah. They're still walking away with massive amounts of equity. Like 13% year over year. Well, the least. average homeowner in the United States has $181,000 of equity in their home. So, okay, so they're not going to make quite as much, but they're still, they've won the real estate lottery. So cut through the, yep. the malaise and the Mickey Mouse and don't be fooled into believing that the market's crashing or even correcting for that matter. All it is doing is adjusting mm -hmm. and the sellers are adjusting down because the interest rates have gone down. There's fewer buyers that qualify. Uh, and obviously then they have to reposition the houses in the market, the sellers do, to correctly reflect the buyer's expectations. That's right. This is particularly good for you to have these talking points when buyers say, I'm waiting for the market to crash or the market is crashing, as well as people trying to sell you REO lists and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Well, I, how about this? The buyer that shows up in your life and says, I'm looking for a deal. I want to yeah. beat on a seller. You know what you should do? Share, them with these, share the buyer these statistics and then maybe push that buyer to the curb because those are the types of buyers that will drive you crazy. And uh, frankly, yeah. they'll never buy anything. Investor buyers, they're the ones that are going to start thinking that they can somehow have the upper hand because maybe they've been reading some of the salacious headlines without really digging into the facts. This is your opportunity to be educated and, you know, frankly, be a little bit more choosy on who you're working with on the buyer side. Next point, Jules. Yes. Active listings, that's the number of homes listed for sale at any point during the period, fell 2% year over year. But yes, that means inventory is coming down, but we were having a really steep decline. So it's actually the smallest decline in inventory since October of 2019. That means that inventory is starting to inch up. I just saw Austin this morning went over 2,500 actives. I've been watching that for about 120 days when back then it was 600. So it's been regularly inching up and inching up. And yet you told me also, we have Reynolds in Austin, it's the reason we watch it. You told me that even though the inventory has what, 4X or 3X? Almost basically, four now. That the days on the market has gone from 11 to 22 or something? 11 to 20. It, it added 10 days on the market. Yeah, it's still deal. well under 30. There's still massive pent up demand in most of the country is the, is the uh, I'm, guys, it's ridiculous, really. It's amazing. Yes, yeah, so despite, a minor shift. Despite the fact that the interest rates are rising, despite the fact that people are talking about recession, you're experiencing massive inflation. Really, that's the only way to describe it in many markets. And your world, my world, Julie's world, everyone's world, we're seeing inflation that's arguably close to 20% on most things. And yet homes are still selling like hotcakes. Why? Because you guys were smart enough to actually sell something that everyone needs no matter what direction interest rates the market is going. Everyone always needs a home to live in. No one necessarily needs to get 
get premium grade gasoline. They can always downgrade to the cheapest gasoline. Nobody needs to buy brand name whipped cream. They can always you know, downgrade to the cheap brand of whipped cream. You guys get it? But they need a house to live in. They need a home to you know, raise their family or just to take care of their, you know, themselves. So whether they're buying to you know, rent, buying to own, buying as a second home, third home, the market is going to stay buoyant because again, and I don't want to get off too far off Julie's points, but if you look at the demographic surges, and that's the only way to describe it, between the millennials and the baby boomers, there is a massive pent up demand in interest rates. I don't really know how much effect or when there's going to be a dramatic effect on real estate with rising rates or frankly, whether the Fed's going to be able to rise, raise rates to a point where there is an effect on real estate. You know, there's lots of arguments to be made that the Fed won't be able to raise interest rates to a point where it adversely affects uh, home sales because of the fact that that's also going to raise the cost of the debt service on the national debt, which is now $30 trillion. But like I said, we're not going to get ahead of our skis. Um, you know, there it is. Next point. So then two, yes. the next two stats reflect all the price reductions you've been seeing on the hot sheets in the MLS, Julie. Yes. But remember, these guys are freaking out because it didn't sell in 22 seconds. This is <laughs> yeah, not the right. end of the world. So I think these are interesting. Still with higher interest rates, even though they went down a little bit last week, get these stats. 45% of homes that went under contract, these are recent under contracts, had an accepted offer within the first two weeks on the market. Now that's down from 49% a year earlier, still not catastrophic. Now of those 32% of homes that went under contract had an accepted offer within one week of hitting the market down from 35%. So these are minor shifts. I translate this as buyers having a little tiny bit of breathing room, but you guys certainly should not go around lowballing unless you've got a real good reason for that. And guys, listen to the podcast that we did recently on home inspections and on um, appraisals and on mortgage financing. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some give that you're going to start seeing more leverage the buyers are going to start having on the transactions, but it might not actually be with the asking price. If one job is to get the house in contract. Another job is to frankly get past the inspection. And the third job you have, third challenge you have is getting it closed. Um, and you're going to see a lot of buyers are going to wake up to the reality that they can start making the house contingent on uh, the appraisal, making the house contingent upon a home inspection. And the home inspection is going to oftentimes be used as a secondary opportunity to negotiate on the actual selling price of the property. All that coming to a market near you. If you don't know how to wade through the waves that I just told you are going to be normalized over the next six to 12 months, you need to join Premier Coaching. I've told you how to do it. I'll tell you again. Just text the word Premier. Premier is P-R-E-M-I-E-R -E to 47372 or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. If you're texting, remember message and data rates may apply. Yes. So homes that sold were on the market for a median of 18 days, flat from a year earlier and slightly up from a record of low of 15 days set in May and early June of this year. Higher days on the market, though not very much, usually means more flexible sellers. And you mentioned contingencies. I'm working on a podcast all about contingencies, so these guys don't have to have a heart attack over that, since you have been waiving all of the contingencies for five to 10 years. Okay, so 52% of homes sold above list price. Again, don't go around lowballing. That's down from 53%, oh no, you know, 1%. This measure peaked in mid-May and has declined 3.8 points since then. Now, on average, again, 7% of homes for sale each week did have a price drop, a record high as far back as the data goes 2015. But again, that means that 93% of the inventory did not have a price reduction. The average list to sell price ratio, which measures how close homes are selling to their asking prices, declined to still almost 102%. In other words, the average home sold for almost 2% above asking price. This was down from 102.2%. So yes, they're taking a little bit longer to sell. Yes, there's a little bit more inventory to choose from. And yes, they're selling for slightly less over list price. They're not going for 120% over list. They're going for 102% over list. But you still have to know your stats on each subject property. So if you're on the buyer side of the transaction, your job is to still do whatever it takes to get that buyer in contract. But understand in this changing market, you can then probably have another bite at the negotiation apple when it comes to the home inspection. Get the seller to accept your offer, put the house in contract, be the winning bidder. And then if the buyer's saying, if the buyer's still, you know, maybe it's feeling a little bit 
a little bit uneasy because of the nature of the market and maybe they're reading some of these salacious headlines. They're thinking that, you know, the sky might fall and whatever, whatever. Just explain to them that we put a home inspection clause in the house and the deal, Mr. Buyer, we're going to be able to have the house inspected. If there's anything unsatisfactory to you, then we can have obviously another uh, conversation with the seller about the final terms and condition of the selling price. But here's the thing that matters. When you're hearing Julie say, for example, that the average home is selling for 1.9% over asking price, that doesn't necessarily give you all the details of that transaction because there could have been some money that was weaved into the deal that was from the seller to the buyer. Closing to costs, things like that. Exactly. Closing costs, unsatisfactory conditions, remedies from the home inspection, all these other types of things. That's what you're going to need to know how to do in a market like this because here's what's going to happen. It's already happening. You just don't necessarily know it. You are, the buyers are going to start interviewing different agents. The buyers are going to then, you're going to want to win that buyer and you're going to want to, again, we teach you how to do this in Premier Coaching. You're going to have a process that you're going to go through where you thoroughly pre-qualify the buyer. Again, past podcasts and YouTube videos about that. And then once you determine that buyer is motivated, uh, has the correct motivation to buy, and then you get them pr uh, approved financially to buy, and then you get them to commit to work with you as your actual buyer, then the next thing you're going to have to make sure they understand is that they have to follow a certain set of rules to get houses in, to understand what's actually happening in the market. Otherwise, they're going to continue to lose. Don't be surprised if you, remember I said rickety bridge, don't be surprised if you, buyer's agent, are going to have to be the one that's always walking around with, don't just, uh, you know, have written down the, the facts and the statistics that we just gave to you so you can give to buyers so they know actually what's happening. And don't be surprised if every single other agent in your marketplace is mis giving the buyers misinformation mm -hmm. based on the headlines that they too have been reading without really thinking about or having countervailing uh, facts to essentially know the truth about what's happening. Understand that when you're the one that's giving the actual facts about what's happening in the market, you're instantly going to rise above the crowd. Now, I want you to imagine... A buyer shows up in your life and that buyer actually has a house to sell. You determine that buyer has a house to sell because you followed our buyer pre-qualification script, which quickly determines if they have a house to sell. So not only are you a, a, a professional because you're asking questions in the correct order to determine motivation, you're taking them through a process, but you're also educating them on actually what's going on in the market. Tell me, think about this. How much more confident are you going to feel knowing this, these facts and these statistics on the market, asking these prospective buyers who also might be sellers questions that are going to lead to you determining what their motivation to transact is, and then obviously helping them get their financing squared away and giving them different ways. And because we've done podcasts mm -hmm. and a lot of education on how we can help them, you know, maybe they're going to do a 723 and they're going to buy the rate down. They're going to get the seller to buy the rate down. They're going to include that in the transaction. These are all the types of things that make you different in a market like this. When you can have these cons uh, these conversations with your prospective clients, how do you feel? You feel like a superhero, don't you? <laughs> right now, that's the antithesis, the exact opposite of what you guys have been doing or it's frankly been educated, air quoting here, to do over the last 15 years. This is the opportunity for you to rise above the crowd and stay above the crowd for the rest of your career because of the fact you've earned the right to be their, their real estate professional because you're providing a level of service from your education uh, that frankly other agents aren't able to have. May, this is the great washout. Many people don't know, many agents don't know that they have to cross the bridge. And once they cross the bridge, they don't know that which of the you know wood uh, planks are the ones they shouldn't step on because they're going to result in them you know flying, uh, falling down the, uh, the Into gorge. the alligators. Into the alligators or whatever's down there. It's not good, right? So you get the point. The reason that you are listening to this podcast is because you want the actionable information because you walk away hopefully feeling education, educated. And with that education, you are now feeling motivated. That is the absolute goal of this podcast. And the next natural thing that we want you guys to consider doing is becoming one of our premier coaching clients. We have created with all of our thousands of coaching clients, a community of success because of this market. That's what our real estate coaching business is all about. We sincerely invite you to join. We'd love for you to consider being one of our coaching clients. Again, just text the word premier to 47372 or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. Yes, because knowledge equals confidence and ignorance equals fear. If you're freaking out, even in the back of your mind, because you're reading something on some realtor board or you're reading some headline that starts out salacious and then you find out these facts, well, you've got to have the knowledge that gives you the confidence to move forward because guess what? 
the br- the land on the bridge behind you know behind the bridge is crumbling just like in Indiana Jones you know when yeah. they're running across the bridge and they look back so trying to yeah. make the market what it used to be is not going to serve you well you've got to move forward and the thing is our part of our job you know we're educating you motivating you getting you into action the education that gives you confidence is based in facts not in conjecture not in freaking out so that you can have better quality conversations with your prospects with your clients which will lead you to more profitability for your practice the way you cut through a fear and fear is always based in emotion it's in, fear is based in un, misdirected emotion basically The way you push past fear for yourself and the way you push past fear or help your clients push past fear and frankly, your friends, your family, people you know, love and care about are giving them the facts, right? If you're given facts about things you might be fearful of, if you think of it, like when you think of something you're fearful of right now and ask yourself, why is it that you're feeling that emotion? Why is it you're fearful of that? Maybe it's something in your health reason why I'm not trying to manifest any fears, or, you know, maybe it's your business, maybe it's your viability as a real estate professional. Some of you are, have filled your head or allowed others to fill your head with so much crap that there's no room for the truth to enter in. And that's the reason that Julie and I are always, we're not going to be big and woo woo ever. We're always going to be drilled down, giving you the facts because the facts cut through the bullshit every single time and twice on Sunday. So use these facts to educate, motivate yourself, and then get into action to then share these facts with your real estate clients. They are going to have a sense of calmness, as hopefully you do now, because you're going to realize, you know what? This market's pretty damn kick ass. Well, it is. It's still very buoyant, as you said. And, you know, if I were listening to this and I had my collection of who I believe to be buyers, I would have written down all of these points. Mm -hmm. I would remember also that rates came down from 5.8 to 5.3%. There's your excuse to call. And then you can backfill that with all of these other points. I think that the main shift that's going on right now is the shift to be able to do things like home inspections. It's not that the market is falling, that we've got depreciation. None of those things are happening. It's that we've got a little bit more flexibility. And one of the great strategies our coaches are talking about is to look in your searches for properties that have been on the market for three weeks. If we know that most of them sell in two weeks, the house that's been on the market the third weekend is going to be more flexible. It's less likely to have multiple offers on it. But these are the types of strategies that we talk about with professional Harris certified coaches on those daily sessions so that you guys can keep your knowledge timely. Now, if things shift further and we're not having 102% of list price and it's only, oh no, it's only 98% of list price. Well, we'll be coaching you on how to deal with that, how to counsel with your sellers. What are those conversations going to be like? You were talking about fear. Most fear comes from fear of the unknown. Your unknown of not what to knowing what to say, how to say it, what's happening in the marketplace. So we give you that 30,000 foot view on the podcast, but coaching is about drilling down and making sure you've got the confidence to do the transactions that are necessary for you to meet or exceed your goals in life. So what are they supposed to do, Julie? What's the homework? Text Premier, P-R-E-M-I-E-R to 47372 so that we can help you not just on this podcast. If you like what you're getting on the podcast, imagine what you get from your coaches every day. That's right. That's the bottom line. Remember, guys, when texting, message and data rates may apply. Do that urgently. First 30 days is 100% free, and it does include a semi-private coaching session with your hair certified coach every single workday. Do that now. We'll talk with you on the podcast. And listen, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who have given us five-star reviews on iTunes. It's dozens that have uh, been uh, added since May. We sincerely appreciate it. If you guys, look, we had, a um, you know, essentially... Our mission in life, especially in a market like this, Julie and I, frankly, have, haven't been engaged in our coaching business probably for almost 10 years. This market excites us because we know a market like this, all the noise that's in the channel, all the people telling you guys to do social networking and TikToking and branding and all this stuff, those businesses quickly go away because they never really were working in the first place, but agents, because they get smarter in a market like this, because the cash flow isn't flowing as fast as it did before, they start then asking, okay, Mr. Branding Company, why is it that I'm still paying you, even though the fact is, is I've never really gotten any business from you. People get a lot smarter when they're essentially being, uh, you know, forced to because of a changing market. The bridge that you're having to cross means you cannot carry as much weight to get from one side to the other. 
Um, and that's what a lot of you guys are realizing. And, and I mean that by weight of overhead. I mean that weight because maybe the branding thing and the social networking thing and all the rest of it. This is the type of market where the best agents who, who have always had the intent and the potential to be the best agents were drowned out because of all the noise that's in the marketplace. The noise is clearing out. You can see it and you can hear it. It smells a lot like fear because that's what it is. And so you need to realize and it's a Warren Buffett quote when there's uh, actually a, there's someone that said it before Warren Buffett, a guy named Baron von Rothschild, when there's, uh, you know, essentially when there's blood on the streets, that's another way of saying fear, though. I think when Baron von Rothschild said it, he, he meant it literally, meant it he meant it literally. But when there's blood on the streets, you know, be greedy. And when, the, when people are greedy or well, when there's blood on the streets, buy real estate. And what Warren Buffett says, when people are greedy or when people are greedy, be fearful When people are fearful, be greedy. This is your opportunity once you have the education to know what to do to start obviously positioning yourself. How much do I believe in what Julie and I are saying? We're making offers on real estate right now. We are personally trying to add to our real estate uh, portfolio, looking for, in some cases, single families, multifamilies. We're probably even going to get into some larger, though the numbers are almost impossible, that makes sense, some larger uh, apartment complexes. That's how much we believe that this is an incredible time to be in the market. We are going to do whatever it takes to educate you, to motivate you, to get you into action. Please walk away from today's podcast feeling unbelievably lucky, unbelievably, unbelievably motivated, and put that, direct that towards being of service to other people. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right, and don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're gonna love that one.